Right, hey guys, it's Weston here. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the editing capabilities of the i5-6600K and the R9390X. So if you want to see the system specifications, then it'll be down in the description. But what we're going to be doing is doing some 4K editing and we're going to be doing some 4K rendering as well to see if this system can actually cope with actually editing and rendering 4K. But before I do that, I'd just like to quickly thank XFX for supplying me with the R9390X graphics card and their 850 watt power supply. I'd also like to thank AOC for loaning me their U2868 PQU 4K monitor. Without them, this series would not be possible, so a huge thank you to both of them, and all their links will be down in the description. So guys, let's get into it and see how this system copes with 4K. Right guys, so first we're going to look at some 4K footage playing back. Now, the 4K footage you're seeing is from phones, which is why it looks a little bit wobbly. This is not hardware or software related, and it's actually just how the footage has come out from the phone. So you, you can actually see that the footage is playing back really smoothly, even though it's a little bit wobbly, like I said, but it is phone footage. But it's actually playing back really smooth. There's no sort of tearing, there's no issues playing back 4K whatsoever. So that's not a concern if you're looking at a setup like this. So next up is actually looking through the timeline and you can see scrubbing through the 4K footage it is a little bit choppy and it doesn't actually play through very smoothly. So I'm thinking this could potentially be a software issue. Now the program I'm using isn't designed to work with 4K and it's more designed for 1080p or less work so it could potentially be a software problem. I don't use Premiere Pro or anything like that so this could be why this is happening. Now we're just going to do some cutting and moving about. So this is just what you'd class as basic editing. So you can see we're just going to play it back and we're going to cut little bits and chop it up and move it around. Just to show you that you can actually do this with no problem whatsoever, even with 4K footage. So you can see I've made the first cut and I'm going to move these footage around just to show you it doesn't have any issues doing that whatsoever so you can see just moving the footage around there's no problems and I can actually move this footage really easily with no problems whatsoever so now we're going to add a basic transition in between two pieces of footage so this is just classed again as a basic thing to do in your video editor it's nothing special and it's nothing really intense it's just a simple transition between two clips so you can see that actually happens really smoothly and there's no issues for basic transitions but what we're going to do next is step things up a little bit and we're going to add things at the same time as the transition and we're going to see if we can make this struggle. So now you can see we've zoomed in on the transition and we're going to add some text here so that should give it more things to process at the same time and we're going to see if it can cope with a transition as well as text. So what I'm going to do now is just add some basic text to start with and then I'm going to add more things to the text to make it a little bit more complex and uh, get this working a little bit harder and see how it actually copes with that. So now what we're going to do is add a simple animation. So this again is not anything intense and it's just something that you'd put in a basic edit. So what we're going to do now is size this up so it happens exactly the same time as the transition and we're going to see how it actually plays back. So you can see that now and it is very choppy and not smooth at all and you can see it sort of stutters a little bit once the transition and the text has been completed it's fine though now what we're going to do is step it up again and we're going to add another effect to this so we're going to add a text overlay and it's just more things for the cpu to actually process so now we've added that we're going to add a fade in and fade out as well so again even more stuff for it to do and we're going to see how it actually plays back so looking at the playback now you can see it's really quite struggling with the footage and the text and the transition once it's happened though it does sort of pick up and run smoothly again but you can see it's not fantastic right guys so what we're going to do now is render the video i've been messing around with so the video is three minutes 52 seconds long and we're going to be rendering it at 4k uh, we're going to be selecting 30 megabyte per second and 160 kilobyte audio. So that's pretty much a typical 4K for uploading to YouTube. So let's take a look and see how long it takes. So you can see the on-screen indicator now and that is real time so that'll let you know how long this is actually taking. So let's fast forward this bit and see how long it takes to render.
Right guys, so that render is done and you can see it took 9 minutes 45 seconds. So I don't think that's too bad to render a 4K video. Now considering, like I said, this program isn't really designed for 4K. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with how quick the i5 has actually rendered this 4K footage. Right guys, so now you've seen how it actually copes. So is it good? Well, I think it's a pretty decent system for 4k now you saw playback was absolutely fine in the editor scrubbing was a little bit of an issue adding text and transitions there's no problems whatsoever it's just when you start adding more animations and more things to it it seems to struggle especially if you put them all in the same place now i'm thinking this could potentially be a software issue rather than hardware because i don't think this software is actually that well optimized for 4k content i think it's more designed for 1080p and lower so that could potentially be why this is happening now I will test this again if I ever upgrade to say Premiere Pro or something like that and I'll test it again exactly the same scenario and see if a different editor makes any difference. Also video rendering was pretty impressive as well. It took just over 9 minutes to render the 3 minute video which I think is pretty impressive. So is this a good system for 4K? Well I think it's pretty good. An i7 would probably be much better but I think an i5 can just about manage. Right guys, so that is pretty much it for this video. If you've got any questions, the comment section is the place to be. So thank you all for watching and I will see you all on the very next video.